Alexander Erzin, born on 6th April 1812 in Moscow in Russia, died on 21st January 1870 in Paris in France, was a Russian writer and thinker known as the father of Russian socialism and one of the main fathers of agrarian populism, being an ideological ancestor of the Narodnik socialist revolutionaries. Trudovics and the Agrarian American Populist Party, Alexander Erzin said, Life has taught me to think, but thinking has not taught me to live. Life, what is life? Life is melting with the family and moving with the family in the joint family with the family tree is life and in that life you will not you don't need to even touch books because everything is learned through experiences the son moves with the father in the field the daughter moves with the mother in the household course and that beauty no nurse or doctors can ever teach. No colleges or universities or MBA degrees cannot teach those are just bookish knowledge. Life has taught me to think that life what you have felt when it is raining you are still walking in the field enjoying the rain and much before the rain you have made sure the rain needs a place to stay in the pond in the rivers making it clear so that his path is not disturbed and he doesn't come and disturb your houses right in the sunlight you walk and your body got so used to getting it burnt alive you start worshipping the sun and use the sun as a solar. That is life. And in that you understand watching the birds and the animals. Even our own doggies at home when they are not well, they go around to find out any grass, greener leaves to, to eat it up so they vomit. So life has taught me to think that thinking that life makes you to think, to share and blossom, to lead. I remember when I started the school way back in 1998 for the Visually Challenged. One mentally retarded boy called Sunil, he joined us. So he cannot pronounce Sunil. So he said, Chuni, Chuni. So we call him Chuni, Chuni. Chuni has got a brother called Anil. And Anil used to tell me this story. He used to tell me, Guruji, my mommy has got only one sari. And in our hut, there is a four-sided coconut leaf covered. That's where we all take bath. My mom also takes bath. Mom takes our clothes and she goes to take bath. Then she washes her sari and she gives it up from the top. I run to the main road and I make sure it is dry. By the time the sari is dried, my mom has completed her bath and the washing of the clothes. And I give that sari. She has only that one sari that has shocked me. Life has taught me to think. That made me to think, oh, not only the children, I must give something to the elderly. So the first two elderly ladies came from Binamangala slum and we collected two old saris and we gave to them. From there the pension scheme came. Then we had hundreds and thousands of pensioners. The thinking helps you to share to understand. Then everybody came and told me, no, no, this is not the manner you should run the school. You should teach them to fish. Give them the fishing rod. Let them catch the fish. Don't give them the fish. I said, no, I will give them the fish. 
I'll make them strong with the fish and then they will go and buy the fishing rod and they let them catch the fish. To tell his sissy, he don't give them the fish, give them the fishing rod. Mother Teresa came to Calcutta came to Bangalore from Calcutta and her sisters asked mother, mother how many bags shall we pack it? Mother just winked because they know they are going to one of the richest cities of India, Bangalore. Bags means bags of money. When mother came, the Chamber of Commerce president took the mic and said, Mother, whatever you're doing is fantastic. But one thing what we can't move with you is you are giving everything free. When you give everything free, people do not have the value for it. They don't consider it a value. So at least charge them 10 rupees or something. And everybody said, oh, Mother was shocked. Next, her chance came to speak. She went to the stage. She looked at everybody and he said, before I start the speech, can we just stand and pray to our master, the God, the Jesus? Everybody stood up and when they sat, mother just did not knew how to start her speech because the Chamber of Commerce President given her one punch on her face. Mother was half knocked down. She doesn't know when to get up. She looked at everybody, wandered around. And then she asked, are you all breathing? And everybody said, yes, of course. And mother said, suppose God is supposed to send a bill for every time you breathe, how much you owe God. The whole audience was shocked. Mother spoke from her experiences. Life has taught me to, life has taught her to think that it is not about the money she collects, how fast it can reach the people with the fish and the fishing rod is later on because all the schools and colleges have taught children with the fishing rod and they are polished and kept it in the cupboard. They don't know what is fish and they don't know where is the river to catch even the fish. They have been spoon fed to live like street dogs called gulamas, slaves. Alexander Herson said, life has taught me to think, but thinking has not taught me to live. They made the schools and colleges have taught the children to think a lot. And that has not taught them even to live. Hence, they do not know when they get married, the husband doesn't know whether how to talk to the wife. He carries a borrowed knowledge of making love and the wife the same way. Both are pulling at two extremes. Both are not melting to become one. If the sugar and the milk start pulling at each other and the coffee powder start pulling on the third side, you will never get coffee. This is what thinking has taught in our society. Come out of that and start melting. Alexander said, life has taught me to think. Life, some of you said people are walking like dead bodies. Life, there is no life in anybody except borrowed knowledge. Scientists found out at the moment anybody dies in the village, the body is buried and a coconut tree or any tree is planted and it grows to become very, very healthy. But nowadays, any, any, any plant you put it up, it dies very fast. And scientists, everybody went and checked that soil and they were shocked. Any human body is buried that area for another 100 years or 500 years, nothing will grow because the body is full of medicine. There is no life, only thinking. They never lived. Thinking has taught them to walk like dead bodies. Life has taught me to think that is your life. You decide. Melt with your family to be one and then suck that taste of feel, smell, taste. 
touch and see when that becomes your life it is precious powerful it is worth priceless and you are respected and loved because your body starts lighting up like a great big light your body starts spreading the perfume far and wide because your experiences is your life go back and start your life